We're both in there. Should be. All right. Are we live? We are live. Hey guys, how you doing? It's me. It's Bill. I'm back again. I have lost Rob. Rob's supposed to be here somewhere. Hopefully, he's the one that puts it all together. He he's the one that sets me up for my funny comments. Yeah. All right. He really doesn't. No. Nah. All right. Um. Hey, we got Howard and Tim already watching. Oh my god. Cool. We got people watching already. It's amazing. Hey, thanks for joining us. We, we do appreciate that you guys yeah. take the time to uh, uh, care to hear what we say on sports cards because a lot of people don't. Yeah. Uh, because we're in a craft mall, a lot of people walk by and they're kind of like, look, there's a couple guys playing with cardboard pieces of paper. They and need I'm to like, grow up. Yeah, they need to grow up. Yeah. And we're like, and then I look out there, I'm like, you need to grow up. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> But that's not really what happens. Usually I'm like, please buy a bobblehead if you don't want a piece of cardboard. So, <laughs> that's that's really how it works. Uh, Damon Baker's here. Don Don's here. Um, hey, Don. Um, we we have a couple boxes in possibly for you. They're like right here, Don. Yep. They literally have literally, your name on them. Yeah, your name is on the back. So whenever you have time and want to come in, so um, the. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Logan? Where'd Logan go? We've lost him. Logan, uh, due to his schedule, he uh, he does play baseball for uh, Ohio Christian University. So he he uh, will be missing out this week. Uh, he uh, so yeah, he'll be back to me just saying the card business is crazy, mm -hmm. and I'll be like, we're out of supplies, mm -hmm. and then I'll be like, what? What are those things? <laughs> yeah. So, what do you want to talk about? Um, well, we'll start. We can talk about supplies. Um, right now, we got uh, basically the basics in. We have uh, magnetic holders for 35 point cards. So, your better cards, you want in a magnetic holder. We have a few of those. We're doing a limit of five. We have regular card sleeves, uh, doing a limit of five. And just yesterday, I got in like four cases of top loads, and we're doing a limit of five. 12 bucks piece. Yeah. Are these 12 bucks They're now? not. Actually, we Well, did I've not... been to other shops and they've been 5 bucks. Yeah, five, five, four, five bucks is probably pretty standard. But hey, I... why does it say 250 on it? Yeah, because that's that's where we are. That's where we've been Wait, for a while. Come on now. We need we need to make the money. Yeah. Well, I didn't you're pay gonna, any more you, for them, so... You're going to stay at the regular price to our customers? Yeah. We're just well, going to limit it to five and make it right. fair. You're a good so... man. <laughs> Yeah. So we're just we're just gonna try to keep it fair, and and until prices are raised on us, we'll just keep it right there. Yeah. Uh, about the same. So yeah, we're doing limit of five, and we do have those in stock right now, and, yeah, we, and they we might got, be going by the end of the week. We we did get multiple cases in, but not mm -hmm. near what we need. So uh, we are doing a limit. Um, hopefully, our local outlet should be restocked. Hopefully by uh, the middle of the month, and we'll be able to get those back in here. Um, but right now, we do got. B C W brand brand top loads and sleeves and magnetics currently in stock. So yeah, and there's nothing. B C W is probably second best. Hey, I've been using opinion. them. I've been yeah. using. I've actually been using them. Uh, the the poly sleeves are maybe not as soft as the Ultra Pro, but I've not noticed any problems with them. You know, it's not like they fall apart or anything like that. It's not like a. It's not like one's a huge number one and it's like oh i don't want that it just i think it's a it's really a flip of the coin you know what you can use at the time you mm -hmm. know like so but and the top loads i've not had anybody complain about the top loads I've, no, they, I haven't either. everybody said they were just fine for what they needed so yeah. um so uh we had somebody ask us a question and we can we can dive into that first um, okay what kind of what question yeah what was the question Okay, so the question was, um, what do we see as the next big thing um, with sports cards? Because we kind of went through phases where it was, you know, autographs mm -hmm. or, or pieces of jersey. You know, yeah. 15, 20 years ago, that was the big craze that caught yeah. on. And then everybody was grading. That's another thing that's still yeah. going on. Oh, yeah. Um, so he was just kind of asking, like, well, what's next for cards? You know, what's going to be the next thing that 
it catches on, and I honestly have no idea. I mean, outside of and, just and brainstorming I, right now, yeah. I have no idea. And I 100% know exactly what's going to go on in five years, <laughs> telling no one. Yes. No. Uh, if I did, I'd be stocking it. If you guys happen to notice me buying up a lot of stuff in particular, <laughs> you got you got me you got me figured out. Um, the market's changed. The market's literally changed in the last five years. You know, mm -hmm. um, there for the longest time, uh, mid '90s to early 2000s, it was jerseys. You know, autographs mm -hmm. were just correct. You just couldn't. You just couldn't get autographs in boxes, you know, or they were so few and far between, but jerseys were very prevalent, and we were paying three, I remember Rob was thinking about buying a box off a guy who was a thousand jerseys at three bucks a piece, mm -hmm. because he was like, oh man, but I can get five bucks a piece for these, and I'm like, yeah, but do you really want to put out that type of money, you know, but that's when we were, me and Rob were still trying to figure out if we were wearing big boy pants or not, and uh, we're still not wearing shorts today, but yeah. anyways, uh, then it went to uh, autographs, you know. Now everything's autographed and the top draft picks and all that. And then, and then all of a sudden, in the last two years, you've had resurgence of like Jordan autographs and mm -hmm. LeBron autographs and all these bat and basketball is just went uh, picked up such steam that it's like I don't know what the next thing is. I do know that people are trending back to grabbing high graded rookie um, graded or high uh, higher graded rookies you know like right now on my desk in the collection I bought last week me and Bobby purchased I got a uh, Johnny Bench that's a PSA grade 6 you know that you know you can go in about any shop I won't, I won't say America because Johnny Bench though one of the best catchers in, in history probably not in California, you know, on the shelves. But in this area, if you're a shop and you, you're more likely going to have a Johnny Bench out, you're not going to find normally a six. You're going to find lesser grades or you're going to find them just so beat up that, you know, it's like a, a percentage of what it's worth, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I've noticed a lot of people. And everybody, by the time everybody gets everything back from PSA, which I think PSA, if I'm not mistaken, someone told me they had, like, I think they, I heard $50 million backlogged, or 50 million cards backlogged, waiting to get graded. So by the time all that stuff comes back, a lot of markets are going to be affected, you know, especially your low print run products, or your, you know, if it's a, if it's a card, there's only 25 of them, there's only, tw no more than 25 can get graded. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at like a Mike Trout upper date or uh, Mike Trout tops update rookie, where the population grows every day on the tens, uh, you know, twenty today, a hundred tomorrow, you know. But the price keeps on going up <laughs> because people are finding less things to put their money into, and they're not wanting to put money into wax because wax is more of a gamble. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, they feel like they're buying, you know, they feel like they're buying an entity, but is it a pure entity? It's still a piece of cardboard with a plastic container on it. So, but I'm not telling you not to buy one. And if you happen to have one, if you listen to my words, you want to sell me one, I'll buy it. But uh, there again, it's still, the, there's so much money in the business right now that it's all investment that... Um, I just don't. I just don't know how it keeps the steam of that, you know. So mm -hmm. you're gonna find a lot of stuff after this is all said and done. I think there'll be a lot of people that bought up and realized they bought the wrong things, and they're gonna have to liquidate. And so I will. Uh, I will more likely buy it on the way down than on the way up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would agree. Hey Anthony, how you doing? I guess um, you know. I would say as far as trends that I could see continuing. Um, not to sound morbid, I guess, but I feel like most of the guys that are set collectors are passing away. I mean, the majority of people in this hobby that... What are you trying to say? Yeah, the majority of people in this hobby that collect sets, like try to hand collect a set of, say, Heritage or, or whatever, I mean, the majority of those guys are in their late 50s, 60s, maybe even 70s. Yeah. And 
we're in with the popularity of breakers who don't want to ship lots yeah. of cards. Oh, as yeah. far as the configuration of boxes, yeah. we're going to continue to see them shrink and shrink. Like last week, we had blackout here. There was literally just ten cards. Yeah, I think it's five cards. It is literally like just this little square. Hey, Bart. I, I think we're going to see more and more yeah. of that sort of thing. Like yeah. less. Per, per I mean, pack. it used to be when we were kids. Now, granted, now me and Rob were kids of the '80s. Uh, when we were kids, mm -hmm. you know, Topps box had 15 cards per pack, 36 mm -hmm. packs per box. Yes. Now the regular Topps packs, Topps box is 24, 24 packs with 10 10 cards per pack. Yeah, I think. I think so. You know, so now the sets are smaller to get, but nobody, everybody's looking for those two rookies. Mm -hmm. You know, and your other stuff is literally just tossed away and and that's a shame because those cards do have value you know there's a price guide every month that comes out that tells you you know um i don't know mike trout his regular cards three dollars well you know that's uh that's to a lot of people that's just base junk that the breakers won't even ship it people they're like no it's just a regular card i'm not shipping i only sh i only ship autographs hits Serial numbered, ninety nine and under. Yeah, you know. But so I mean, you have you've seen the last of the days of your sets, unless the only the only the only caveat to that is, Top still puts out factory set every year. Yeah, and uh, you know, and you would for uh, I know they do baseball still. I well, they don't do football because they're there is Donners does football. Donners does football. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's that's the only those are the only factory sets that you're going to find out there and. Everything else, it you can't open one box to put together a set almost anymore. Maybe yeah. a jumbo tops or something like that, but it's just not. Um, As an, another trend that I see continuing is repackaged products. Um, I feel like there's going to be some people, uh, some some repackaged products out there that are going to gain more legitimacy. Mm -hmm. I guess, and with everybody buzzing about these big cards, these uh -huh. that have already been hit in other, you know, products, yeah, um, and just you know a little bit older, not going to get in your box kind of thing. And the people that like a gamble are going to go for these repackaged products. Mm -hmm. So I assume there's going to be a couple companies step out and kind of be shining lights in that yeah. industry of legit repacks. There, there are a few companies mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. but there's not. I mean, it's kind of like up to them for quality control, what they have in it. Mm -hmm. Like, we even had a breaker product in mm -hmm. here, and it sold very well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was all basketball. Uh, but if major companies step up to do that, like Leaf mm -hmm. or like even Panini sponsored and all that, or Tops, you know, they can put in cards that, you know, a breaker. Okay, uh, let me get back to that in one second. Okay. Uh, Anthony said he, he personally likes to build sets from pre 80s and stuff like yeah. that. And uh, Damon, uh, Damon would know if we still sell starting lineups. Uh, we do have, I have thousands of starting lineups still. Uh, they don't sell very well. Uh, they, every, Mc, uh, your, your McFarland, your uh, starting lineups, eventually the license got bought out and then they became McFarland's. And then after McFarland's, Kinda which were like, way better. Which like, were real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Way more realistic. I mean, you can actually, I know a lot of people that customize them, and you can actually do a really nice customize into a McFarland compared to a starting lineup. But now it's kind of jumped over, and now the biggest thing's Funkos. Mm -hmm. So, and I do carry a line of, I do carry sports ones in here, or like I have Brutus the Bot, Brutus, uh, Brutus, I almost said Brutus the Beefcake, but it's not Brutus Beefcake. It's yeah. Brutus Buckeye. Anyways, um, so, anyways, um, okay, I'll, I'll let you guys on the the thing of a uh, putting together a a repackaging product. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you're putting together a repackaging product, one, you have to have a big dog. You have to have something to sell. You gotta have something that people want to risk their money to try to get. You know, so you're going to end up paying for that. That card, no matter who it is, um, dealer, company, or whatever, they have to put money into that. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, you know, say it's a ten. Say you're doing ten of them, ten boxes, and one of them has that. You still have to put something in those products 
to have something for somebody to draw after. Mm -hmm. So, but you can't just, you're not going to put comments in there. You know, you literally, if the boxes are, say they're 50 bucks a piece, they have to get, a, if we were, if we were involved with a product like that again, mm -hmm. you would have to get at least $50 worth of book value or more. Uh, that's just the way it is. Um, that's the way we would look at it. <clears throat> now, um, the companies like Tops or Panini, they would have a big advantage over that because they could throw in a Mike Trout autograph, which uh, from my understanding is <laughs> when Tops buys autographs from, from Mike Trout himself and has them sign them, they're around $200 range. You know, they can, but if it's out of five, that's a $1,000 card. So they can have a much bigger thing to shoot for than a person that's repacking them themselves. So, mm -hmm. just my thoughts on yeah, that. Sorry about I, that. I was going to say, like, uh, somebody that's doing more and more is Leaf, and somebody that's got, like, their, you know, their foot's in the, you know, kind of in the pool. I mean, they, they, yeah. they have something in the game already, some yeah. skin in the game, I guess. So, they've already got some, but they can't mm -hmm. really expand um, because of limiting or limited licensing. Yeah. But they can do these repack products, and so the names out there, so like Brian Gray or whatever yeah. who owns Leaf, yeah. he, he has an opportunity to kind of stamp his name on there that's mm -hmm. a well-known name on yeah. some of these uh, repacks. So I think yeah. there, there's a basketball repack that they did mm -hmm. that I know was always selling out and yeah. was doing very well. So. Uh, Anthony wanted to know, oh, Justin Hammond won the yeah, Top Stadium Club. We do have Top Stadium Club in uh, back in or not not back in stock. It just came out. It just came out. It, I just did. took it out of a box about an hour ago. It's 105 uh, limit two per customer. Yep. Um, just letting you know, Justin um, and Anthony want to know is that what those Christmas pack used to be? Um, I don't sure. know. I'm not sure. Um, I know. I know years ago, like I've seen them. Yeah, of course, I it was beyond me. But back in the 60s. In the 70s, they would do like a Christmas repack. It was literally the cards they had left over. They would just throw them in, and it would be like a holiday pack. I seen, I've seen some of them. I've seen the auction. It was like a rack pack that just has like 12 cards in it. You know, just something to fill the shelves at Walmart. Or it wouldn't have been Walmart back then. It had been Hex and you yeah. know, your uh, Ames, Ames or uh, um, Benjamin Frank, Ben Franklin's Five and Dime, stuff like that. So. Yeah. That would have been that type of stuff. So, um, let me see. Uh, one other thing I was just going to mention is like probably the biggest change we're going to see is probably in distribution of product. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I watched this video. It was on Instagram, and it was it was really high quality, and it was um, from Burbank Cards, and I believe the guy's name's Rob Deer. Yes. Um, and he owns Burbank Cards, and he just went off because. That multi-million dollar company, I mean, very successful with employees, got, I think, two boxes of elite football or something. Yeah. So he just went off and went on this big spill about allocation and how that's an issue and how, uh, the, local, how the companies, the card companies, should support the local guys who are actually investing in their community, mm -hmm. investing in a business, not fly-by-night people who are breaking. That, that's, that's his words, not mine, but uh, admittedly. And I sit here with an unsuccessful uh, breaking part of my company saying that I see it as a little bit more fly-by-night. Uh, I don't see it as um, quality of business or as interesting to build as, say, a shop or an online you know, website or whatever you want to say, or even setting up at shows for me personally. Yeah. Um, but that said, he, his big, his big uh, point of his, his whole thing about allocation for card shops was, you know, we are the, like, he was saying that card shops were, like, the entry point um, for everybody in the hobby. That it was, like, the way that, uh, you know, they we're got the it. forefathers yeah. of, of the business. Yeah, like, that's how they got information and stuff. But honestly, I disagree with him, even though I'd like to agree with him on that. This, that might have been the case in 1990, but in 2019, if somebody wants to know what's in a product, they Google it. Yeah. They look at one of the big online retailers. Mm -hmm. They check eBay. Yeah. Um, they are not coming to me. Now, yeah, sure, over years, uh, you know, Bill, Bobby, and I have built some wisdom about, about cards and stuff. But if you want quick answers, I mean, I honestly don't even know. You could ask me about half the products behind me. And off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you how many hits are in a box. Um, so a lot of the answers that you're looking for, you go online and search for them. Yeah. 
So I agree something needs to happen differently with allocation and uh, the local shop needs to be a priority again to them versus big online breakers. Yeah. I just don't know, you know, they're in it to make money. And yeah. so I understand that whoever's moving, yeah. you know, a million dollars worth of products is going to going to get a million dollars worth of product to move. Yeah. So I mean, as you know, we we haven't really talked about like shelf price and stuff like that. But you know, me and me and Rob sit here and talk a lot, you know, about prices and stuff like that. And you know, he has a base price when he when he orders something, you know. And we're very transparent. If anybody asks us, we'll tell them. But you know, it's like we also know what the market rate is and how much it is to re to to get it back on the shelf mm -hmm. you know so like uh let me see let me let me think of something here like uh contenders uh panini contenders draft when it came out before the years before this it literally was 120 to 140 dollar product because mm -hmm. you get five autographs um it peaked out at 225 almost 250 a box or something I like that so. Now, Rob, your your companies we get we get ours through one of the wholesalers, uh, not not an online retailer, but a sports card distributor. Distributor, yeah. And you know, so they allow us to get you know. I think that product we got twelve boxes. Well, okay. once those twelve boxes are gone, and then the price goes up, then we have to try to find more to put on the shelf. Mm -hmm. So we're not getting it at that base price. We're paying a secondary price, mm -hmm. sometimes a third dairy price, sometimes a fourth dairy price. Mm -hmm. So, and it literally is a, it's, you know, it's, do I buy this product? Do I put it back in here? Um, you know, like right now, basketball. We would love for you to come in and buy uh, Mosaic basketball. We can't get it. There, none, we're, we are more of a, re, we're realistic in our, in our expectations for customers and, I can't think of one of our customers that would want to come in and pay 700 for a Mosaic Hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, Mosaic came out. It should have been a $150 box. Mm -hmm. But because the because the way the market is and, the you know, this guy's worth this and this guy's worth that. And, you know, you know in, anytime there's an NBA game, all of a sudden another guy's worth more money. P4 buying Jamal, Mar Jamal Murray's. I'm pulling on my commons mm -hmm. box. Mm -hmm. Never cared to have him in my life, you know. I'm like, wait a second. So, with that being said, uh, the prices that end up being on the shelf, you know, that's why like there's some products coming out today that we literally are sold out already. Mm -hmm. we, we just don't even have it for the customer. We so. had a customer come in, yeah, uh, a younger customer that I would love to have had a box for him. I mean, he walks in the day a product comes out, you would think that you know I would have it yeah. but I got such a limited yeah. amount and and as this hobby grows more people are saying hey yeah. can you hold me this can you hold me this yeah. and and I'm still limiting it to one a customer yeah. I mean I'm not letting anybody yeah. you know railroad me or anything but, but still, it's still still when you have a business and you want to try to build your you only have to try to be building your business but make the customers happy you have and only get four boxes of a product mm -hmm. and you know and we have people at buy office regularly you know and unfortunately um this customer i mean i know he was i know he was disappointed that we didn't couldn't sell him a box but it was you know so we we definitely if if you know there's something coming out you want to contact rob in advance mm -hmm. um we can see if uh what he thinks his allocation is going to be and what is available mm -hmm. um so yeah just to let you know because we we definitely we we want to encourage people to buy hobby you know and we want you to come in the shop and enjoy your time not just sit at home at midnight and be like hey i go on a certain site and be like hey i want this you know that's you can do that but that's not what we started out we started you know i used to beg my mom to take us to uh what was doug's shop going extra innings extra innings mm -hmm. extra innings was a shop in this area mm -hmm. loved it i i mm -hmm. would be like Oh man, I just need to go get some packs of cards. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's not. Yeah, the the markets. You know, now you can buy it at home if you want, but you know, th there's still hobby shops. Not many, but there's still hobby shops. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some comments from Bart. Sure. 
the big dis distributions are holding allotments from original shipments until wave two or wave three price comes down, out, so comes out. Probably. I see that. I, I'm not a huge conspiracy theorist. I see some of what's going on behind the scenes. I, I don't know. Some of the some of them do that for sure. I'm not yeah. sure if the more reputable reputable ones do, but it's I possible. I think that. I I mean I think it's. Yeah. No, I agree 100. percent There, there, okay. there shouldn't have to be a second and third tier pricing. Mm -hmm. You know, but everybody and their mothers trying to make a living off selling mm -hmm. cards, even retail Walmart blasters. Yes. You know, so and Bart also said Panini and Tops are not limited on the supply. No, they have plenty. Mm -hmm. uh, Panini, I've noticed Panini starting to try to get in the game, and you know, I'm not trying to say Panini's that. I just kind of disagree that if you're telling me, hey, I have this product and I'm going to sell it to you, but I'm going to do it as a Ducks auction, so you're trying to get the max amount, I understand that, but, you know, then then you need to set your price at the first place higher, not try to gouge the industry out of every all the money it's in it. Um, and we that, talked about that, that now some products... He's the wholesaler, I'm not. Yeah. I sell singles. So, yeah. So be mad at me, Panini, not him. Yeah. No, th there are some, some products that are coming out, especially Topps products, that they are literally raising the price, like doubling the price yeah. with no like added Bowman. content. Yeah, Bowman Draft, it comes to mind, like literally doubling the price with no added content. So it's really, what's it going to do? It's going to shrink my, they're already trying to get into what can the market bear? Well, mm -hmm. they want a piece of that pie too, um, yeah. you know? And it's, and it's not that Rob's getting the whole pie. Rob's getting... Rob's getting a piece of pie and then have to go back and get another piece of pie when someone else is taking a piece off of it and someone else is taking a piece off of it. So, I mean, by the time, I mean, every, someone, someone told me Prism, uh, Prism Hobby this year is up to almost $3,000 a box. Very, very, very few people held on to that case that long to get that money. Yeah. You know what it did? It moved from one guy from 300 to 400, from 400 to 600, from 600 to 800, to 800 to 1,000. And then it kind of made a big jump to 1,500 and then to 2,000. So it's like, you know, people are holding on to it as an investment and making a quick turnaround on it, you know, it's, and it's a quick burn. But I just, I just don't see it keep, I just don't see the, um, I just want to recommend it. If, if I was going to invest in sports cards right now, I would not invest in wax. Just my just my opinion. I'm not saying I wouldn't buy a box to open. I'm just saying I wouldn't invest in over overly overly priced basketball specifically that you're literally going to open a box for, you know, $700 box of mosaic and if you don't hit a autograph of Morant or Zion or collar rookies of either of them you're taking a bath mm -hmm. and i hate to see people lose money i mean i i hate i hate to lose money i hate even more to see other people lose money because it's if if you if you have a plan you shouldn't be you shouldn't have to lose money so that's just me sorry about that just a rant that's the rant of the day <laughs> i should do like a five minute rant on something like not card related at all yeah i could do that so, uh, anybody got any questions? Yeah. The only thing coming up is next weekend um, is uh, the is show at Hilliard. This weekend or next weekend? Well, it's next weekend. The show at Hilliard, the okay. 12th and 13th. 12th, 13th? Yep. Um, so, I will be there set up with boxes and stuff. Yeah. I should have some supplies, but I don't think I'll have a great selection, to be honest, of supplies. Yeah. Um, and then next week, it may be just me doing this video, what? or me and Logan, possibly, um, if they don't Have change. Have I been fired? Yeah, you're going on vacation, right? Next oh, week. Oh, okay. I am going on vacation. Hey, uh, just letting you guys know, I will be out of the office as of uh, Friday, and I will not be back until probably the following, probably 10 days later, probably like the 14th. So yeah. It's like a Tuesday, I'm, right? Yeah, it's like a Tuesday. So yeah, I'm yeah. taking a vacation. I'm going to an area in the Virginia Beach area, so please don't try to track me down. Um, I mean, you can find me. If, if anybody's in Virginia Beach, look me up. I'll be hanging out. I will be at the beach. <laughs> so, uh, 
But yeah, so uh, Rob and Bobby and uh, Logan will be taking care of the shop during uh, that time period. So, and uh, I won't even be at uh, Franklin County. So, there'll be some dealers that are very disappointed that I'm not buying off of them. And um, but I will be back at some point back in the hobby. Take got to take a vacation. So, but um, is there any products coming out next um, week? Next week, um, off the top of my head, I know Bowman Chrome got moved. I'm not sure how far it got moved down, but I think it was supposed to come out like next week. It got yeah. moved pretty far. Are we getting any new blasters in? Um, really soon, I will have. Well, we do have illusions that we just got in earlier this week. Okay. I still have Chronicles. I'm below dis like wholesale distribution prices, oh. and I mean like second round yeah. prices on blasters uh, on both actually Illusions and Chronicles. Yeah. And then I will have a very limited amount at a at a pretty fair price of Donner's football in about a week, week and a half. Blasters, Donner's football blasters. Okay. Um, my allocation on hobby was terrible. And so I've been looking into acquiring some retail products too. And yep. uh, so far that looks like that's you know, gonna happen and I'll be able to be pretty fair on it. Yep. So instead of chasing Walmart with the chance of maybe yeah. finding it, if you go there at the exact right time, you could come in here and yeah, I might be 10 bucks more than Walmart, yeah. but. Hey, you if, if you find me at Walmart, I'm more likely getting a sub from Subway. No. So I'm not chasing down the wax. But if it, I'm not saying if I'm not there, if I'm there and it's there, I'm not saying I'm not going to purchase a box. But no, I, would I, I definitely am not. That is a young man's game running from Walmart to Walmart. I used to do that for starting lineups years ago. Like hit every Walmart, like middle of the night, hoping to hit chase things and uh, Hot Wheels and stuff like that. Like treasure hunts. Yep. That, that game is past me. Yeah, uh, yeah, Bart. It does appear that my stuff will. That it may be discounted while I'm gone. I didn't plan on it, but it it, it may be discounted. You guys have to come in and see. Um, hopefully, 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 my uh, our skilled staff's negotiating skills are, uh, are, are, are 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 not giving away my stuff while I'm gone. <laughs> so, but all right. Um, so. No, there's no show this weekend. Nope. And not anywhere around. It's Labor Day weekend. Hey, enjoy your labor. It's mm -hmm. Labor Day weekend. And uh, for all you laborers out there, hey, take Monday off. And uh, we will, uh, we will, I, I will, re I may, I may do a video from the beach <laughs> on Wednesday. Just so I, just so I don't feel like I was completely left out. Yeah. But uh, that'll be about it for me for next week. So, um, then the following week, the 12th and 13th, is the Franklin County Show, where Rob will be set up. Mm -hmm. uh, he probably will have Logan helping him, maybe have some cards out. Bobby will be up there probably trying to purchase stuff. Um, I Then, when's your show this month? Uh, 26th. 26th, so it's yeah. it's late in the month. It'll be yeah. two weeks after that. So South we, we will let you guys know. And then the 3rd of October is our next Trader's Night. Yeah. Trader's Day. Let's just... We're just going to keep with Trader's Day. It yes. just makes more it's pretty sense. Pretty much show all day. We're here all day. We're buying pizza. We're eating pop. Wait, I'm I, drinking. I mean, I'm drinking pop. I'm not eating pop yet. But all right. Yep. Yeah. All right, Anthony. Hey, you take care. Um, all right, guys. Well, I would say that's about it for us. Um, like I said, I will be gone next week. Um, if you need to get a hold of us, please. Uh, Try Rob's email or um, yeah. Rob's. Uh, they can call my cell phone. Yeah, his cell phone. Um, it, it, it's available at any message, time. Message, yeah, message. Or, page, or, or, uh, or um, I will leave it on. I will leave his number on my phone as a callback number from my phone. So that's cool. All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks for joining us today. As always, uh, we appreciate you watching. For me, Bill, Rob, Bobby, who's here, Logan. Logan, where are you at? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. See you guys later.